Welcome to Wine and Real Estate, the podcast where we drink wine, we have fun, and we learn about real estate investing. Real estate investing is so much more than just buying buildings. It's about building relationships, building your dreams, building your dream lifestyle, customizing your life. What do you want to do? What do you want to achieve? It's much more than money. It's more than getting rich. It's a different type of wealth. It's the wealth of time, the wealth of freedom. And now let's get to the wine and the real estate. Let's start this episode with some financing tips from our go-to mortgage broker, Streetwise Mortgages. Over to you, Dahlia. Hi, I'm Dahlia, founder of Streetwise Mortgages, and in today's episode, I will go over another powerful creative financing strategy to add to your toolbox, which is commercial financing for residential properties. Many investors think that the only way lenders would finance a residential property, such as a single family home, duplex, triplex, or a fourplex, is by relying on the investor's personal income. While many lenders do, there are lenders on the street who would finance a residential property starting at two units under what's called commercial guidelines, which primarily look at how the property itself will qualify for the mortgage based on its income and expenses versus how you as a borrower would qualify. If you are an investor who have exhausted all of your options for qualifying with residential lenders, This method will open up doors for you and will enable you to continue to scale without having to worry about whether or not you have maxed out on the lending ratios with these lenders. Under this method, you can get up to 75% of the appraised value of the property and potentially 80% as an exception if the property qualifies. The interest rates are also a lot more favorable compared to considering a private loan option. So, When do you use this method and what do you need to keep in mind? Firstly, if you feel that you have hit a wall with the residential lenders due to the size of your portfolio, low personal income or high debts, I suggest you get a second opinion from our team at Streetwise Mortgages as most of the time clients come to us thinking that they've maxed out and we are still able to unlock financing for them. As an investor, you should maximize on residential lending first, in my opinion, as it gives you the best leverage at 80% of the value, best amortization at 30-year AM, and lower cost of borrowing overall, including lower interest rates, cheaper appraisals, and minimal lender and broker fees, if any. Once you have maxed out with the residential lenders, That is when commercial financing can save you money and help you scale before you take on private funds. And here are the things that you need to keep in mind. Number one, lenders will consider income from legal units only. So if you have a duplex with one unit as an in-law suite, for example, and not necessarily a legal duplex, residential lenders would consider the rents, but commercial lenders won't. This would, as a result, impact the loan amount you can get under commercial financing. Number two, the maximum amortization you can get is 25 years versus the 30 years amortization you can get under residential financing. And number three, plan for higher costs overall, such as higher appraisals and potentially lender and broker fees. If your deal got declined by your current lender or you feel that you have maxed out on traditional financing Or if you would like to see how this financing tool can help you scale, our team at Streetwise Mortgages will help you unlock your possibilities. To book your complimentary portfolio planning session or for questions, email us at info at streetwisemortgages.com. Cheers to your success. Hello, everyone. So for those watching, so this is an audio and video podcast. If you're watching Anyway, you'll see I'm both Francois and Jennifer tonight for some reason, but I apologize. I'm not Jennifer. I don't have the nice blonde hair. Anyway, I have an awesome guest tonight, Will Mitchell, joining us live from Belize. So I've been following Will for a few months on his awesome YouTube channel. And as some of you know, I just recently bought in Costa Rica. I'm buying in Florida, and I'd love to add Belize to the mix. And Will has some awesome arguments as to why. You should invest there, maybe move there, or 
whatever. So, Will, if you uh, could please introduce yourself and tell us more about your background. How did you end up in Belize? Where are you from? And all that. Uh, absolutely. And Francois, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. And one comment, that intro, I love it, man. I love the beginning shot with you and the wine. It's, it's yeah, amazing. Really, <laughs> I'm always drinking wine. I was interviewing people today at 2 p.m. and I had my wine. They're like, it's a little early. Whatever, it's wine you know o'clock what? somewhere. <laughs> it's better. It's more natural with the podcast. Unfortunately, I have some tea, but... Uh, That's okay. Next so, time. Yeah, next time. But as for my background, I am Canadian. I was born in Calgary approximately 10 years ago was when I first moved to Belize. But I had been visiting Belize for my entire life, just, you know, family vacations. And oh, wow. when I got out of university, got into real estate a little bit in Canada, mostly just leasing. And then I had the opportunity to come down to Belize, join Remax. So I started with Remax down here about 10 years ago and started obviously as an agent at this point now after you know putting in those years i'm now the regional owner for remax belize so we've got 13 offices countrywide amazing um, 80 agents we've got a great book the investor's guide to belize real estate and as you know we're going to discuss a bunch of the other stuff we're doing down here but really belize was just you know as a younger guy it was an amazing opportunity especially coming from canada because at the end of the day one of the top reasons I wanted to, you know, move to Belize was the amazing weather. I live on a Caribbean island. Wow. Uh, I wish I could show you guys my view right now, but I'm looking out our office door here at palm trees blowing in the wind. Uh, an average day is, you know, when we're done at the office, we get on the boat and we boat down these amazing turquoise waters. So the real foundation of coming here was to find an amazing change of life and enjoy something super special so that's kind of where it all started so every day is awesome just like i just came back from costa rica i was there 10 days everything was nice the sunrise the sunset the food so i'm sure belize is amazing as well does belize have like rainy season and kind of a dry season or not or yeah so it's a good question and it's funny you said every day is awesome literally on our wall beside me here we have our company slogan which is every day is a gift so oh, there day, you go <laughs> we see that but we do have a rainy season i mean overall what you'll find i think most of the viewers are probably canadian on here yeah so what you'll find is anywhere from you know 25 to 30 degrees celsius with a beautiful caribbean breeze right now we're in more of a dry season the rainy season is similar to what you'll find in costa rica or miami that's usually september october beginning of november so that's kind of the time when in that period we're going to get a lot more rain you know tourism really slows down at that point whereas the rest of the year especially coming right out of that is when we hit our peak season so wow. given the fact that we're you know a nightly rental market which we can dive into more after this for the most part we do have a bit of a variance as opposed to what i'm sure most of your viewers are used to in their you know, multifamily, uh, monthly rental investing. Yeah, that's it. I mean, because that's you have tenants year round, but there is seasonality to multifamily as well. I have properties in New Brunswick. And if you have a vacancy in December, it usually stays vacant till February or March because people yeah. <laughs> do not want to move in 70, 70 centimeters of snow. So I guess there's that kind of seasonality. But yeah, I agree. Sure. you have to be ready for that. So what do you do during that kind of slow period? Do you paint your house or come down to <laughs> do upkeep or maybe it's an opportunity? <laughs> you know, I mean, from at that point, it's not like a Canadian winter where, you know, things really shut down. Yeah. We still have the ability like, and when it rains here, it's not like a Vancouver rain where the entire time it's going to rain. Like I used to, I went to University of Victoria, so I have fond memories of the winters there, which is like nonstop rain for that whole period. Whereas oh here, <laughs> the way it rains here, it'll come in like showers that happen periodically throughout the day. So you can still go out like on the weekend, we'll still go out on the boat, we'll go fishing, diving, whatever. But wow. usually what our team is doing is in the office working. So <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that, the office is always uh, sheltered from the rain. <laughs> 
that's it no it's and it's a smart smart move and if maybe if you're a digital nomad that could be a good time to head down to belize and do some work sure. focus on things how's the internet by the way it's, it looks like it's great because we have a great connection um yeah is it good, fiber optic or what's good what's question so the island that i'm based on is an island called ambergris key it's the number one tourism destination within the country so 24 miles long three miles wide at its widest and this is the first location where we got fiber optics so nice. you'll notice on the island like we have comparable speeds to what you're used to in canada but if you go to more remote locations around the country you're going to find that it's a little patchier but usually uh there's two providers here there's smart and digicel and usually they'll offer you know commercial packages so if you're a digital nomad who is willing to spend then in most places you can get it but the island is definitely the best internet okay very cool and watching yep. your videos as well if i'm sure our listeners will watch after hearing this uh, you see the house construction is a bit different i've seen some houses are kind of raised can you tell us more about the construction type like is it wood or stone like not stone but concrete or Yep. So, I mean, the reason they raise it is because the water table here is, you know, relatively high and okay. we're not like a super hilly or mountainous island. So generally in most places, they'll raise the property about three to 10 feet above, you know, the water table or, you know, the ground. When people are building out here, we do it a very specific way. We work with a couple builders who have been building here for years they will quote in wood or concrete. Obviously, concrete is going to have some benefits from yeah. the, the long term standpoint, maintenance, insurance is substantially cheaper on concrete homes, uh, wood homes right now, especially with the lumber price increases that we've seen over the past year, which I, I believe has been affecting pretty much the whole world believe. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's no different here. And we've seen that it used to be that and i mean there, you can get someone to build for cheaper than this i'm talking more about like getting a canadian or close to canadian standard home usually you'll have about fifty thousand dollars in fixed costs like getting your permitting prepping your land architectural fees and planning and for wood right now you're looking at about 145 bucks a foot versus concrete which is about 155 to 160 bucks a foot so oh. I mean, from what we found with the the benefit long term, almost yeah. everyone we're working with is opting to build concrete. And it's interesting. I mean, when we kind of started doing deeper market research, and I can talk more about the high level uh, belief stuff after this, but we kind of were the first guys to go in and do an analysis and look at, okay, what's the replacement cost for these homes that are selling in the market here? And the reason we have so many clients building, which you'll see on our YouTube channel and why we're so keen on developing as well is because most homes and condos in the market, essentially all of them are, are selling for about 30% above the replacement cost of those wow. homes. So we just, because, and now it, it, you know, everything happens for a reason, but it's really because we haven't had a ton of growth in the market. Um, in terms of rental inventory. So we're really keen on building. We work closely with a number of architects, builders, project managers, and streamline the whole process. So someone abroad doesn't even have to think about it. No, it sounds amazing. And some of the videos I've watched, you talk about buying land and then there's financing. And then you, I guess your team can help us out with the design or like liaising with a, a team. And then we build our our dream vacation house or our permanent exactly. home or whatever it is. So that sounds yeah. great. It can really be anything. You know, we've, most people are looking to have a vacation home and then when they're yeah. back in Canada or the U S they want to rent it out, which is, that's kind of our standard. So it makes sense because you, I mean, for work, I mean, you, I'm fortunate the job I have, I can be anywhere in the world, but some people are accountants or doctors or whatever, and they have to come back to Canada. I yeah. personally don't, but <laughs> some people sure. do. And 
Yeah, you can make it a lifestyle. So can you tell us more then about living in Belize? Like how, what are services like? That's a big concern. Like I mentioned, Costa Rica is the closest comparison I personally have. Uh, I picked a place that's near shopping and restaurants and things because I knew my wife and kids. If we go and it's too far, they just, yeah, they could not yeah, go of course, very of suburban. Course. So do you have those modern conveniences other than internet and electricity and all that stuff? <laughs> Absolutely. And I'll, I'll go a little bit high level too and explain to your audience a little bit more about just Belize in general and why Belize sure. versus other countries like Costa Rica, which I love Costa Rica and all these other countries, but this is kind of why I'm in Belize and why so many Canadians are coming here. Yeah. The, the foundation of it all really from a real estate perspective, which I'm sure your viewers are interested in hearing is that it's British common law, full foreign ownership, fee simple title. I've got a, Belize bill here. So it looks very similar to oh my Canadian goodness. money. It's like an old $20 bill or a $2 right? bill or something. <laughs> so the, the whole foundation of the real estate market, the legal system, it being a parliamentary democracy, and then it also being English speaking. So easy it really for the makes documents. It, it makes it easy, right? Legal documents, medical professionals, day-to-day -day life, communicating with people like my Spanish is patchy at best. Like I can go to Mexico and order a couple of beers, but <laughs> being able to, you know, move around the country and really be able to communicate with everyone is a huge asset. So yeah, that was one of the big picture reasons why uh, Belize has done something very similar to what Costa Rica has done too. They've actually modeled some stuff from Costa Rica and dedicated about 46% of its land to national park and Marine reserve. Wow. So it's super progressive stuff and it protects what really makes belize amazing yeah you don't want to natural... see a walmart on a hill and <laughs> right? in the ocean. <laughs> exactly so like the, all of the natural beauty of belize like these amazing jungles the barrier reef which in terms of living reef is the largest reef in the world it's 181 miles long wow spans the entire distance of the country all of these amazing things are protected but from a real estate investment perspective it also puts a limit on the supply of developable yeah. real estate which as more people come in demand increases it's really driving up equity appreciation in the market so that's kind of some of the really base level reasons why belize from on a you know like day-to-day -day life perspective it's really i mean outside of some minor things it's really like living back home only you're on an island like we've got numerous grocery stores on the island um We've got great, like different places you can go, like in Mahogany Bay, specifically where I am, there's great restaurants, there's sushi, there's, you know, dozens of restaurants. Like this is a number one tourism destination within the region. So a lot of this stuff is there. Some stuff isn't there, which is really a tremendous opportunity for people right now as well. Yeah, it's like, coming set up shop. <laughs> exactly like we have so many people that have these base level businesses which over the past three years we've helped them integrate into the island and they're extremely successful because you really don't have a ton of competition at this point Good. we only have three hundred and eighty nine thousand people in the country so oh wow it's a small city basically <laughs> it, it's like a small city so we don't have a massive population and ton of competition but the base amenities are there Definitely, it's a little bit slower of a pace. I don't know right now because yeah. it seems like everything in Canada is stalled. So Belize might be running laps around Canada right now. Maybe, but... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's an amazing place to be. And can you tell us more about those business opportunities? Because I do know quite a few of my listeners are looking for new business opportunities. What What's missing? Maybe that could be an interesting avenue for someone. For sure. I mean, I'll give you a, an example of somebody we just helped come into the market and set up a business, which was the barcade I just mentioned. So it's like a bar and arcade. And oh, cool. what he did, yeah, it's an awesome concept. He's got all these great arcade games, um, basketball hoops and air hockey, all this stuff. He's got a golf simulator. So wow. it really started with the conversation of us not having a golf course on the island. And yeah, where would you guys, put it? <laughs> exactly. There's not a ton of space for it. So we mentioned to him like golf simulators, it's wide open and that golf simulator and his business has been just cranking ever since. 
another even more simple example was like about five years ago, there was only one restaurant that had a legitimate cappuccino machine here. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> like we're talking about super base level stuff here, Francois, that nice. I'm sure a lot of your viewers have some great businesses. And if they have, you know, any questions about it and want to shoot ideas by me, I'm happy to, you know, be a guy to brainstorm with them. Very cool. So, yeah, because this is a huge opportunity, as you were saying, Canada did come to a stall with COVID. I don't want to get into COVID, but it has hurt a lot of businesses. So people are looking for new opportunities and a new lifestyle. So a lockdown yeah. in a, on a beautiful island is not so bad. I could put up with it instead of looking out at snowbanks. It's not so bad. I mean, if it happens again, hopefully not. Uh, yeah, but that's, that's an awesome conversation. I'd love to hear about financing. That's usually a big hurdle um i know i bought in costa rica i had to buy all cash there is financing yep. but it's it's difficult what about the lease what what are our options i know a few but I, i'd like to hear from you firsthand for sure so financing in belize is, it's a super interesting topic and there's some major benefits to the circumstances of belize also some downsides yeah essentially for the most part it is a cash market So the way we really help clients find financing deals would be seller financing, developer financing, and we're very good at sourcing these deals. The standard terms on one of those is usually going to be uh, for a land deal, about 20% down, 8% interest, 30 year amortization with no prepayment penalties. So wow. you can stretch it out really far. Uh, different develop, uh, developments we work with offer similar terms. But one of the major benefits of not having traditional bank financing in the market is really that it's a, a very safe market when you hit a downturn, because yeah. when things take a turn and foreclosures start happening, take 2008, 2009, for example, that can't really happen in a more cash market because nobody's foreclosing. Nobody's just going to dump their property. So people no. really just kind of sit and the values hold much better than a a highly leveraged market. So there's pros, there's cons to it from a safety standpoint. I think it adds a ton of value. And our market generally too, when we hit a recession, we're a very strong market because a lot of people looking to diversify away will come here. With having the Remax region, we get access to all of the data. So with the 2008, 2009 financial crisis, we actually saw an increase in transaction volume oh my goodness. in the coming years. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's amazing. Wow, that sounds great. I, yeah. I also know we can, uh, as Canadians, maybe you're not aware, but you can use registered funds to buy in Belize as well. So okay. your your pension yeah. plan, you can pull out. It's a very, it's not a complicated process. It's a bit of a procedure, but you can use your registered funds and buy there. So we'll have to talk because I'm yeah. I'm looking into that myself and, and see uh, what are the options. So. What are the types sure. of properties, if you can describe it? Because this podcast is audio and video. Uh, so some people yep. might be jogging right now and listening to us. Can you tell us like what what's a hot property style? Like I know places, it's little condos or is it detached houses or what's what's typical? So right now approximately 82%. And we take this data from the Belize Tourism Board. They have every registered you know, unit in the rental pool uh, that's available right now. So we take all that data and do a breakdown. Okay, how many studios are there? How many one bedrooms are there? How yeah. many two, you know, et cetera, going upwards. So what we found that was approximately 82% of the current rental inventory was studio, one bedroom and two bedrooms. So Wow, so fairly small, so affordable, I guess, kind of. I mean, it's fairly small, but we took the data and, and thought about it and looked at what was going on on Airbnb yeah. and, you know, using programs like AirDNA and stuff like that. And we found that there was only like a handful of homes that were five plus bedroom in the market mm. and that they were performing exponentially better than all of these studio one and twos. So wow. instead of, you know, kind of taking the traditional approach, which most realtors take in Belize and just kind of listing and selling and listing and selling and going with yeah. these, we said we need to find a system to create the product that is going to maximize our investors return on their investment. So that's 
Another reason why a lot of people are building right now, we don't have the single family home inventory, specifically larger single family homes. We usually encourage four plus bedroom with a pool. So a typical listing that we'll work with will be anything from, you know, an entry lot that's like $45,000 with financing upwards to million dollar mansions on the beach or private islands. But that's kind of the standard right now that a lot of people are focused on. And there's two areas on the island right now that we really specialize in. One of them, and I should probably say a little more about the island, but one of them is an area called Secret Beach, which is kind of like the new town. If you look at Ambergris Key, like I'd mentioned before, it's the number one island in Belize, 24 miles long. It receives approximately 42% of the tourism. So when oh, you're wow. looking to invest in a rental property, you need those heads in your beds pretty much. Yeah. So, <laughs> and it's like double the next closest. So from an investment standpoint, people really should focus on Ambergris Key. And Secret Beach is like the next town. San Pedro town is essentially fully built out. So we focus a lot over there. And then the development I'm in right now, Mahogany Bay, which is a gated community, 24 seven security. Uh, every property is waterfront, 24 commercial businesses here, Hilton Hotel, our Remax headquarters. So this is kind of like the premier community for where people are building these luxury homes. Very cool. And then for yeah. flying in, flying out, or how, how do you get to Belize? Like what's the closest airport? And how do you get to your island? It sounds great, but you have to get there. What's Good question. The... You got to get there. That's step one. <laughs> so the easiest way for your Canadian viewers is probably with WestJet via Toronto. If you're in the eastern end of Canada, if you're in the west, then it might be better to go via Houston with United. Okay. And you would Toronto, you would fly direct. It is a seasonal flight, but they're expanding it out. Uh, that goes to the Philip Goldson International Airport. It's our only international airport here located in Belize City. So you would land there. And then we have two domestic airlines, which really just do regional travel. And you would take either Tropic Air or Maya Air to the island. It's like a 15 minute puddle jumper flight. Oh, yeah, you're up and caravan. down and you're there. <laughs> exactly. So it's like 14 seats. You're looking out at this amazing turquoise water. 15 minute flight, the pilots will sometimes take you over the reef and you'll see like, sometimes you look down, you'll see manatees and dolphins. So oh, wow. that, it's, it's like part an experience of the in its own, right? <laughs> like, it's part of the, really part of the Belize experience. The other way, and that runs usually about 150 Belize, so 75 US. Okay. The currency is just pegged two to one. Or you can take the water taxi, which it's about an hour and a half ride from Belize city to the island. And that's like 20 bucks. Oh, wow. So it's still not bad. Yeah. And you get to see some sights. And exactly. you're not a fan of small airplanes. I know my wife is not. <laughs> yeah, There's I mean, no way she'd get on a 14 person plane. No way. <laughs> she just say, no chance. Take me to the Yeah. So taxi. we would be boating it. Okay. Very good. That's, I was curious about that. <laughs> yeah. No, the water, it's good. It's, it's a nice ride as well. I mean, I prefer the flight just because it's quite shorter. But if, you know, if you're coming in for the first time, both are a great experience. Yeah, you get to discover. But when you've seen it 10 times, like, yeah, OK, I've seen it. <laughs> exactly. Cool. And what about banking? So we spoke about financing and stuff. Is there a bank on the island? Like, how do you get that cash? Like, is. Yep. So basically, I mean, when you're financing through sellers or developers, there's really no bank involved in that no. transaction. But if you are looking to, you know, get a bank account, there's two primary local banks that operate in Belize dollars, Atlantic and Belize Bank. You would need to first get a, you know, residency, which is probably a good thing for me to mention to your viewers that process, or a work permit, or be a Belizean. There's another bank which the president of the bank is actually one of my best buddies. It's called Key Bank. It's an international bank. They have U.S. dollar accounts. Oh, good. Canadian dollar accounts, uh, euro accounts. So that's another option. And that's a much easier path because the president of the bank is a great friend of ours and we work super closely with him. So those are kind of the two outlets. And just to backtrack to, you know, if someone actually wants to be in Belize, what's that process like? 
Yeah. So Belize is pretty open to you coming in. Like if you're a Canadian and you're coming in just for vacation and you want to stay, you can stay as long as you like. It's just every 30 days you have to go to the immigration office and for $200, they stamp your passport and extend you for 30 more days. So it's a 30 day visa. Okay. Yeah, it's a 30 day visa. So, but you can extend that in perpetuity. Like there's some people wow. who own, you know, 20 homes out here, hundreds of investment properties, and they don't even have sorry, residency or anything. Popping out. <laughs> yeah, they don't even have residency, right? Like they'll just come in with that and, and stay on that visa. Stamp and then like, go back home. and Exactly. Yeah. The alternative is if you stay for a year with leaving no more than 14 days, then you can apply for residency to be a permanent resident which is a great program we also uh, the government just implemented another program which is the temporary investment residency program which if you work with a lawyer they can help you get that if you've invested two hundred and fifty thousand us or more so there's a number of ways to be in belize it's probably one of the easiest countries for canadians to come down to we have a ton of canadians on the island it's actually pretty crazy how many <laughs> when you walk around it's like Mini Canada. People saying A everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, A? <laughs> yeah, I don't have it. Apologizing. <laughs> so, Very yeah. cool. Uh, and then I'm curious about owning in a corporation or your personal name. That's a big discussion in other countries. Like in the US, yeah. you need an LLC and an LP. You don't want your personal name appearing anywhere because yep. that's huge exposure. Uh, Costa Rica, again, that's my comparison point. Doesn't matter. You do want the corporation for the power of attorney when you're not in the country. It makes it more convenient. Yep. And for banking in Costa Rica, if you have a corp, you don't need to be a resident. You just show your corporation and you're good to go. Uh, Belize, what's the situation like for that? Because it's common law. So what what are the options? So the options really, it can be in your personal name, it can be in a corporation, and it really depends on what your objective is, right? Like in some cases, there are some benefits to holding a property in your personal name. Like if you want to get a boat captain's license. Oh, yeah. So if you want to do that, they want to see either you're a resident, a citizen or own property, which they don't want to see it in a company. They want to, you know, physically see it in your, your name. Okay. So we've even had some clients just buy like, you know, a $30,000 lot, put it in their name so they can get their captain's license. Uh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, the real like important tax implication, putting it in your name is the transfer tax, the stamp duty. So we have oh, an 8% yeah. stamp duty here. So a lot of people will use a corporate structure called an IBC, International Business Corporation. I'm not sure if they use them in Costa Rica quite yet, or maybe they do, I don't know. Um, basically the benefit of this is it allows you, if you're buying or selling, to not have to go through kind of the tedious process of going through the lands department, and you don't have to pay the 8% transfer tax. You can just Ooh. transfer the shares of your corporation. To so a lot person. of people, exactly. A lot of people put their uh, property in that, or if you have multiple properties, you know, you can have one, with larger several. corp that holds each you know Holding. individual other corp but it depends on the goal standard is usually held in an ibc but if you want to get a boat captain's license or some other kind of unique permitting then it does help to have a property in your name okay so you could do that's what i do in canada i have some in my own name and then some in my corporation for yep. various reasons so down there like you said you could have a cheap lot just to get your permit <laughs> And then the exactly. fancy stuff in the corporation. But exactly. if you want to live there, you do want to invest at 250K. So you'll need to have something kind of, well, not sizable, but um, something decent yeah. in your own name and then corporate stuff. So for sure. Wow. This is really cool. So thank you so much. Uh, time flies as we're having fun talking about Belize. Uh, so, Will, if uh, people want to get a hold of you and learn more, what's the best way to get a hold of you and your team? Uh, the, the best way I would say is our YouTube channel, which if you search in YouTube, Will Mitchell Belize, uh, we usually do two or three videos a week, sometimes a little more than that. It's all content based around the real estate market, you know, lifestyle stuff about Belize. So that's a great way. Or if you want to reach me via email, it's will at remaxbelizerealestate.com. 
And if you guys have any questions about Belize uh, at all, feel free to shoot me an email. And if you want to follow along and learn more, definitely check out the YouTube channel. Yeah, it's really worth it. Everybody uh, make sure to check it out. Thank you so much for your time. I know you're a busy guy and you have a big team. So I'll let you get back to, well, it's probably uh, evening now, but let you enjoy your evening and uh, we'll have to follow up. I am hoping to fly down to Belize at some point. So we'll have to meet in person and maybe you can show me around and Sounds convince me to buy a, a few places. <laughs> for sure, man. Thank you for having me on the show and would love to show you around Belize anytime. You just let me know. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay, man.